Hey guys, how's it going? So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how to apply a Hubbard correction or perform a DFT plus Q calculation for an element that is not already configured in Quantum Espresso. So to give you a hint about what I'm talking about, um, for example, let's say um, you want to perform a DFT plus Q calculation for ZNS. So if you open this input file that I have here of ZNS, so it has a cubic zinc blank structure and for example, what you can see here is I have the flag LDA plus U, which means that I'm going to be performing ADFT plus U calculation. And then I have provided the Hubbard corrections or parameters for both the atoms. So the Hubbard U1 basically corresponds to ZN and Hubbard U2 corresponds to S atoms. Now, when I run this calculation, what happens is although ZN is configured in Quantum Espresso, so if I only apply the Hubbard correction on ZN, then the calculation runs fine. However, if I apply the Hubbard correction on S atoms as well, then there is a pro problem in calculation because I end up with an error. To give you an example, um, so here I will just change my directory to the directory that contains this input file. So I have my input file ZNSRN as well as the zero potentials in the directory Hubbard. So I'll just change it to that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to run the calculation using um, pw.x. So this is the executable pw.x and then the name of the input file and then the output file. So I'll just go ahead and click on enter. And what you can see is that the calculation ends abruptly with a crash file and the output states that there's an error in routine set Hubbard L that is zero potential not yet inserted. So that basically happens because I'm performing or giving a Hubbard correction for an atom that is not already configured in Quantum Espresso. So in order to provide such Hubbard corrections, what you're going to do is you're going to head over to the directory that, you know, where you extracted your Quantum Espresso or, or compiled it or installed it or whatever, and then head over to the directory called modules. Now in the modules directory, what you can do is you can search for the file set underscore Hubbard so here it is. So here we have two files, set Hubbard L and set Hubbard N. So basically what these mean is, um, you know, whenever you are performing a DFT plus U calculation or providing a Hubbard correction, what you are essentially doing is you're providing a correction on the electrons of a particular orbital. So for example, in the case of ZN or ZN, um, the electrons that are, you know, configured in quantum espresso, uh, for Hubbard correction are the 3D10 electrons. So D is the orbital on which you are going to be applying the corrections. Then 10 electrons basically is kind of the occupancy of that orbital. And then 3D10. So 3 is the you know principal quantum number or the energy level. So uh, we are going to need all these three information for our atoms. That is, we are um, going to need to know um, whether we are going to apply the Hubbard correction on the p orbital electrons or the s orbital or the d orbital electrons. So for example, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open this file set Hubbard L and what you will find here is that there are a lot of elements that are configured in Quantum Espresso uh, and um, you know and uh, you know Quantum Espresso have provided the you know the angular momentum value L uh, corresponding to the orbital. So what you can notice here is that for the transition metals, the uh, Hubbard correction is being applied to the orbital corresponding to L is equal to 2. So that is the D orbital. So as you can already notice here that Ti has, you know, I think two D electrons. So um, I think they are applying the Hubbard correction for those. Then Zn also has 10. So Zn is already configured for the Hubbard correction. However, then you will go down and you will notice here that um, even more elements with, you know, where the um, F orbitals are, um, you know, being uh, corrected using the Hubbard correction. And then the Hubbard correction is being applied on the um, P orbitals of C, N, O, arsenic, etc. D orbitals of gallium, indium, etc. So all here, you can see that there is no S atom. So in my case, um, for my study, what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply the Hubbard correction on the outermost S electrons, that is the P electron. So S has the electronic configuration 3P4. 
So essentially I'm, go I'm going to be applying the Hubble correction on the p orbital electrons. Therefore what I'm going to do is I'm going to add s here in this list. So I'll just add s using the convention followed here and that's it. So that is how I have you know told quantum espresso that to apply the Hubble correction on the p orbitals of s atoms. Now the next thing that I need to do is I need to provide the n. However, um, one thing that I didn't mention already is um, you won't have this file if you are running Quantum Espresso 6.2, I think so, or an, or a, an older version, because um, this is a rather newer version and even I didn't know that um, there was this file. So I think this file was added in a newer versions where they you know, basically improved upon the Hubbard algorithms or something like that. So you won't have this if you are running an older version. So don't worry, so just forget this part where I'm going to make any changes in the set hover end file because you won't uh, have this file in your uh, package. So anywho, so for S atoms, we are going to be, you know, providing the correction for 3P4. Therefore, um, we are going to provide N equal to 3 for S atoms. So just, you know, go ahead and add S in this list. Now what you can also notice is that they have already provided uh, O again here. So for example, O has the electronic configuration um, 2s to 2p4, therefore the Hubble correction is being applied to the p orbitals and they are of second energy level, so therefore 2 here. So now we have made changes to hub set Hubble L and set Hubble N and added our s atoms and the corresponding angular momentum and uh, you know n values. Now the last thing that you need to do is, that is the third step is, you need to go ahead to the directory pw and then to the src directory and search for a file called tab df90 so here it is and then here you are going to specify the occupancy of your um, orbital on which you are going to apply the Hubble correction so for example I'm going to apply the Hubble correction s atoms therefore what I'm going to do is and s has the electronic configuration 3b4 right so what I, similar to oxygen atoms so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add s here so here comes sulfur so that's it I guess so that are the only three steps you need to follow however there is one more very important uh, you know finalized final step sort of thing that is you might have to recompile your quantum espresso installation or build so to give you an example what will happen if I go ahead and run this calculation once again so as you can see nothing much so basically as usual or as previously um, the calculation again ends with an error um, okay that you know error in routine set about l zero potential not yet inserted because what happens is even though we have made changes to the source files we haven't recompiled them so you're going to have to recompile them so just go back to the directory where you install or you know extracted quantum espresso and then give the command dot slash configure i mean you're basically essentially going to reinstall it so dot slash configure And then once that is done, you will have to, you know, recompile all the packages. So um, if you're going to be performing only a, you know, pw.x calculation, then uh, you can only give p make pw. Although you can give make all if you're going to be performing more calculations that rely on the ft plus u corrections. So however, for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to be giving make pw and then just wait for it to recompile and then show you how the calculation runs after these changes that we just made. Okay, so once the compilation is complete, what we can do is we can go ahead and retry the calculation. So just head over to the directory that has your input files with the Hubble correction for the newer sulfur atoms and then try to run the calculation once again now. Now as you can see, um, the calculation is not aborting and it's running and even the crash file has disappeared now. So we can go ahead and launch the uh, editor and try to view the output file. Now here you can notice um, that the calculation is running pretty smoothly now and there is all the you know stuff here indicating no problem in running the calculation and here you can see atomic wave function used for LTA plus U project uh, etc so the calculation has finally begun so just wait for it to complete and I think I'll just end this video here because it's uh, basically working as it should so that's it that's how you apply a DFT plus U correction or you know configure quantum espresso to apply the DFT plus U correction to a atom that is not already configured there so that's it 
and if you guys enjoy this tutorial and you know found it useful okay so the um, by the way the calculation just completed um, so let me just go ahead and check it out okay so here it is so anywho so I hope you guys found this you know tutorial useful and um, that's it and if you guys did then don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this thanks for watching and have a great day